Hello, Wonder Hussy here at quite possibly the most spectacular place I've ever camped. And considering some of the places I've camped, you might consider that, well, a pretty tall statement, but I mean, look where I am. <laughs> I'm in this sort of side canyon surrounded by these amazing sheer cliffs. And this canyon goes all the way back to a place that I've been wanting to check out for quite some time since I first stumbled on it while browsing Google Maps. I do that a lot. Yeah, I'm a nerd. I spend a lot of time just looking at Google Maps, both on regular and satellite mode, and I find a lot of interesting places that way. This one was already labeled. I think it's kind of a historical site. It's supposedly, it's, well, it's called, I think it's called the Hermit's Cabin. I'm guessing there's some old hermit's cabin at the back of this canyon. And what a canyon it is. I parked there uh, partly because it was one of the only flat areas and partly because, well, it doesn't look like there's any big boulders in danger of falling off onto my roof while I sleep. And that is something to be mindful of. <laughs> anyway, I've been roaming around this part of, well, I'm in Utah, beautiful Utah. I've uh, been roaming around for the past, hmm, four or five days checking out all kinds of amazing sites. Utah is just spectacular. And I think what I like about it and what I've noticed about it as I've been traveling is, you know, I came in from Nevada. So I came in the northeastern or northwestern corner of the state, which is very desolate desert. And then I kind of passed into more of like a sagebrush plain and it looked, looked a lot like Nevada. But then I came into this and well, now I know I'm in Utah. I think what's cool about Utah is I guess it's kind of where the Great Basin landscape kind of starts turning into the Rocky Mountain landscape. And that's part of why we get all these amazing rock formations. Anyway, it's already like 6.30, almost 7 o'clock Pacific time. And I'm in Utah, so they do mountain time. So that means it's almost like 8 o'clock. It stays late, late this time of year. Uh, so I really don't have time to go poking around this cabin now. I need to go back, set up camp, and make some dinner because I'm starving from a long day of adventures. <sighs> but I just, one simply doesn't pull into a canyon that's home to a hermit's cabin and not at least poke one's nose up it, at least a little bit. Okay, one of the first things I noticed that's kind of cool is this rock up here. At first I thought it was like a petroglyph. It almost looks like a Native American's face wearing a big war bonnet, or that's what it looked like to me. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like kind of like his eye, his nose, his mouth, and then feathers coming off of it. Uh, maybe it's just me. Anyway, <laughs> I really, really shouldn't be hiking around up here right now. Not only because it's getting late, but also because I'm just wearing my flip-flops that I was driving in, and I don't know how much of a hike this is going to be. But like I said, oh gosh, I'm just so curious. I have to at least get a peek at this cabin before I go to sleep. I'll never be able to sleep. It'll be like a kid on Christmas. You know, I'll be waking up all night going, is it morning yet? Is it morning yet? And it didn't look like it was too far of a hike on the map, but I don't know. This canyon does get kind of narrow up here. Oh gosh, yeah, look, the farther up we go, the narrower it becomes. It's basically just like a stream bed. I'll bet there's some gnarly flash floods that come barreling down this wash. <laughs> Good thing there's no clouds in sight today. Oh my god, but it smells amazing here. I think it's all these juniper trees. Oh, it smells so fresh. After being, you know, I do love the desert, but after being on these alkali flats for a few days, it's actually really nice to be back around green stuff. <laughs> okay, but I'm going to make an executive decision. I need to turn around as hard as it is to do. I'm not going to hike any farther up this canyon until the morning. I'm gonna go back down to my car and I'm gonna get everything ready for sleepy time and make some food and I'll get up early in the morning and we'll go hike to the old hermit's cabin then. Okay, spent a very peaceful night in this beautiful canyon. And well, now it's mid-morning. I took my time getting up, but I'm gonna hike up 
and check out this hermit's cabin. Wow, this is actually super cool. Okay, just for reference, here's the view that we're looking at all the way up this beautiful little canyon. <laughs> and well, these windows here have a perfect view of it. You know what I mean? Like imagine if that was the view out your window. I'd live in, well, what essentially amounts to a cave too. Okay, now, unfortunately, I don't know any historical information about this place at all. I just saw it on the map and it's called Hermit's Cabin, I think. Uh, so I guess some hermit lived out here <laughs> and built this. I mean, I'm guessing what happened is, if we back up, there was this big rock formation and it probably had kind of a natural cave already under it or like an overhang. And then it looks like whoever built the cabin well, they obviously constructed a wall here, which you can pretty much see it's just leaning against the rock overhang. And then this wall here, it looks like same kind of thing. They just kind of built it, built a wall butting up against the natural wall of the cave. That's pretty clever to work with an existing cave like that. And then there's another kind of shallower cave here where it looks like I mean, I'm assuming he probably had some kind of outdoor fire pit. Maybe that's just from people camping, but I don't know. That's a lot of soot. So that looks like a lot of years worth of fires. He probably did. Maybe he was smelting something here. Or who knows? Maybe he just burned his trash. And then over here, there's another pipe coming out of the house. I think it's another stove pipe and an old wash basin where he might have washed his clothes. Or for that matter, that's maybe where he took a bath. <laughs> maybe he heated a wash tub full of water on this fire here and that's how he got himself clean once a month <laughs> okay well let's go on into the cabin well there's a lot of soot here too i mean there's this stove pipe coming out from the inside where there is a little stove but apparently it wasn't doing a very good job venting because oh my gosh look at the ceiling of this cave it's totally sooty ah, i wonder if he died of some kind of respiratory infection <sighs> couldn't have been very good to breathe this smoky air anyway let's go on into the cabin Oh, yeah. Gosh, it's about 15 degrees cooler in here, which I guess you would expect. Living in a cave. Look at this. this maybe that was his bed, this sort of alcove that it looks like he maybe chipped it into the wall and it's flat-ish. Uh, although I'm not going to lie, I've definitely slept on more comfortable beds. And then it also looks like uh, he chipped some kind of shelves into the wall. Look at that. <laughs> shelves for his, I don't know, his canned goods maybe, or maybe he just had some knickknacks. Maybe this is where he kept the family Bible. I don't know though, if he had a family Bible, he probably would have just kept it <laughs> right here on this bookshelf. Now, I don't know if this bookshelf is original to the cabin. I guess it must be. I mean, it looks pretty old. Uh, built right back into the side of the cliff. Look at that, they even cut a curved piece. Uh, I don't know how it's affixed. Oh, look, there's a metal pipe that he drove into the wall, dang, to hold this thing up. So it's not going anywhere. What do we have? Oh, a really, really, really old pull tab. Oh my God, pop top. And then some notebooks. <laughs> Hi, Bob. 1929, oh, here we go. May 30th, 2021. Is that the last person that was here? Oh no, there's more people. Mitch and Sarah were the last people here on August 21st. Well, there's another Sarah in town. Today's August 25th, so I'll be sure to make my entry in this logbook. But I mean, if you look at it, tons of people come here over the years. I wonder if there's any information that'll give us a clue to his, the history of the person who lived here. He didn't want to be found. He did enjoy selling whiskey. I wonder if that's just speculation or if they knew something about it. Okay, and here's what looks to be like a little songbook. Oh, look, make new friends. 
Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver, the other gold. Remember that? You sing it as a round. We used to do that back in the day, elementary school. Man's life's a vapor. Turn ye to me. Oh my God, a German song. Look at this. If I have any German fans watching, I'll try to sing this, but oh my gosh, my German's not very good. Du, du liegst mir im Herzen, du, du liegst mir in Sinn. <laughs> Remember that one? <laughs> and for all you Americans, no, we're not talking about du, du. Du is the word for you, the informal word for you in German. Oh look, here's one for my Australian fans, kookaburra. <clears throat> kookaburra sits in the old gum tree, merry merry king of the bushes he. Laugh, kookaburra laugh, kookaburra gay your life must be. <laughs> Boy that gay kookaburra, I bet he had a ton of fun. Okay, well I could sit here singing songs all day, but I won't waste everybody's time. Uh, another notebook. Gosh, I wonder who comes up here and swaps out these notebooks. So, I mean, these things seem like they fill up fast. Oh, wow, look at this guy. Stayed a night, being very gentle on the place. Oh, so somebody camped in here. What ghostly sounds. First it was dark, then moonlight, then mist that had the world outside. Oh, then mist that hid the world outside. Snow hit at 8 a.m. I tried to catch water from the falls above. Oh, there's a waterfall above. Only a trickle. Day two, went out on a road trip to a spring, then Dome Canyon, now I'm back here again. Wish I could live here. Boy, this guy sounds like he had an amazing time. But I was looking in here to see if there was like any kind of historical information about the guy who built this place, and there isn't really. Unfortunately, it's just people's names and their little stories of what they did. And then of course, even in Utah, somebody had to draw a dick. Well, I didn't draw a dick, but I did. Just say Wonder Hussy, AKA Sarah Jane, love this place, and the date. Short, simple, and sweet. Okay, well that, that's pretty much all there is to this cave. I mean, aside from these notebooks, there aren't really any supplies laid in, other than you know, a few pens, pencils to write with. I guess this might be a little bit of his old watering can or something. Somebody found this stuff laying around here. But you know, there's nothing here in the way of like canned goods or whatever. There are a couple candles. You know, those like Catholic religious candles. I guess they're just plain. They're not, they don't have saints on them, but there's one by the fire pit there. And then there's another one over here by the window, which by the way, let's peek out the window. Oh my gosh. Remember what I was saying about how great your view would be if you lived here? I mean, look at that. It'd be like living in Zion National Park. And yeah, I suppose like anything, you'd get tired of the view after a while. Well, then you could go over to this window and look out here. Look at this view. A little bit different. Let's go see where that waterfall was. I mean, maybe there's like a path back here that goes up to it. I'm pretty sure there's no water in it now. It's the heat of summer. But, you know, springtime? No telling how much water comes down here. Huh. I have no idea where a waterfall would be. But I mean, he had to have had a, a water source if he lived here, you know? Otherwise, how was he gonna take them baths to clean himself? <laughs> okay, well, next to the cave on the hillside, there, I was gonna say it was his trash pile because there is a old can lid, but that's really the only thing I see. Maybe he didn't generate much waste, you know? Maybe he was like a real, true old time mountain man, you know? I feel like the closest town to where we are nowadays is probably about 70 miles away. So that's pretty far for him to go getting supplies. You know what I mean? Maybe there was a town closer back then, but I can hardly imagine. We're in a pretty desolate part of the country. So maybe he just had to rely on whatever he could hunt and trap and cultivate out here. Which I don't know if these are pinion pine trees, if he would have been able to get any pine nuts or what. Cause it, I mean, I don't really even see any place with soil suitable for a garden. So maybe he just lived on squirrels. Oh, look, across the way, there's another little cave. Maybe he had a cave neighbor. Let's hike up and check out the neighbor's place. Holy cow. <laughs> okay, this is a lot more rustic. I wouldn't call this one a cabin by any stretch of the word, but it does look like somebody had a little fire here. And you know, if you needed to take shelter from a storm, <laughs> you'd be happy to have this little cave. <laughs> Even if it isn't as fancy as the Joneses. 
<laughs> oh my god, what if that was really what was going on here? There was another old timer out here. <laughs> well, we'll call him Jedediah and Jebediah. So let's just say Jedediah lived over here in this rough cave. And then one day a big old city slicker named Jebediah came in and built up a real fancy cave across the way. <laughs> and then maybe Jedediah didn't even have this wall here at first, but well, when he saw all that going on, well, then he had to compete because you know how it is. Always trying to keep up with the Joneses. I mean, it does kind of look like this cave was carved by hand. You know, the way that angle is so almost like a right angle. So, I mean, it's not like he just was squatting in a natural cave. <laughs> I mean, he did put some effort into it over here. <laughs> Okay, anyway, back over here at Jedediah's cabin or cave. Look at the way he built it. It's pretty cool. So it had an actual cement floor, it looked like. I'll have to go back in and check that out. But he clearly built all that up with all those rocks laid ever so carefully and precisely. And then look at the wall. Yeah, same thing. He found all those flat pieces of slate, whatever it is. Yeah. Laid them together just like puzzle pieces. And then look at his doorway. Well, first of all, there's no door, but just a big tree trunk basically holding up that side of the wall. I wonder why he didn't put one on that side. Maybe there used to be one and it fell off or something. Now that I think about it though, I wonder if he did have some kind of door or something because gosh, in the winter, it's gotta be cold up here. I mean, we're at pretty good elevation, I think. I'll have to check. But, you know, Utah, they get snow. I mean, there's all these trees and stuff, and it's a waterfall. It's obviously, obviously some kind of snow melt. It seems like he would have needed something to keep the blustery winter winds out of his cozy little cave. But if he did have a door, imagine how cozy it would be in here. That fire lit up like that guy who camped here. <laughs> if you had a fire roaring in that thing, well, maybe you wouldn't want to close the door because it would get smoked out. <laughs> Either way, you could probably get this place pretty warm and toasty. I mean, it almost looks like he even had some kind of clear plastic up over the window, you know, to keep the breeze out. Well, that would have been nice. What about over here? Uh, there's a nail hanging from the top. No telling what he used that for. Oh, he does. He's got a couple little nails here. Huh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, it looks like there might have been plastic over this one, too, at one time. And then as for the door... I mean, I did notice there's some nails. One, two, three. I suppose he might've had like some piece of leather or something or an old you know, bear's hide or something stretched across it for those cold nights. And then here's another look at the floor, like I said. To me, that does look like cement or something. Oh, I wonder what year he made this thing. Man, it's so frustrating not knowing any of the history of this place. I guess frustrating in one sense, liberating in another, because that way I can make up my cockamamie stories. <laughs> okay, well, since there weren't any supplies laid in, I wasn't sure if it would be okay to leave some stuff or if that would just be considered litter, but... <laughs> well, I've had people send me things to leave in these cabins that I go to, so I thought, I don't know, I'll leave an American flag, you know, there's no flagpole, but... Still have Old Glory sitting on the shelf. And then I also left a uh, first aid kit. Some of my viewers named Kim and Jared made me a bunch of these little pre-packaged first aid kits. They've got, you know, band-aids and antiseptic stuff, matches, uh, instant cold compress, some uh, electrolyte stuff that I could leave in these cabins that I go to. And so you never know, somebody might actually need something in this here. So I'll leave that there too. Thank you, Kim and Jared. And then of course I had to leave one of my little live, laugh, love pendants just so the old cave has a feminine touch. I don't know, it doesn't seem like littering to me. I mean, I feel like that stuff I left is just as useful as those candles. And hey, now anybody who comes in here has matches to light the candles with. Ah. Anyway, that's pretty much all there is to this old cabin. I guess I'm just gonna hike back to my car and roll on to the next destination, which is only 17 miles from here and is also very interesting, or it looks very interesting. So stay tuned for that if you're into weird stuff in the middle of nowhere.